when do you know when it's your time? I mean, <clears throat> when do you know when enlightenment is beckoning? Well, let's put it like this. When do you know when God is beckoning you? Because it's the same thing. Enlightenment and God, same thing. The moment you become fully enlightened, the moment you, you hear the voice of God, or you may see this God. But not with the eyes, not with the senses. You will not hear with the senses. You will not see with the senses. Whatever sees, or hears, or senses, is of no sense to the human body. So therefore, <clears throat> even I cannot explain to you what sees God, or what hears God. Or what knows when full enlightenment has been granted. That your rewards have been paid. I can only say. It takes a very, very long human time. For you to realize. close revelation of what you experienced but not exact so what <clears throat> when do you know when it's time because many are sitting thinking you know I, I wish I could see um, something different, something special, something wonderful, something unique, something that can make me a saint, make me famous. And normally this is the mind. <laughs> I'm not here to disappoint you, but normally this is the mind. There is something that will deep in your core Take your attention to say, is something going to happen? Is something going to happen? And a couple of clues to this <clears throat> does not come from the mind. No clues come from the mind. Mind is, mind is taking you to this point. But it's in the background, it's in the distance. Even though it may be pulsating in your head, that's ego mind. Mind is in the background. And it's watching closely over you. But something makes a decision. And the best way I can describe it is in, in a video I made maybe last year about explaining a very profoundly Trying, are, are trying to explain what happened, what actually happened to this body or this thing that dwells inside this body. And this knowing is like this. When you are at a point in your life that you're Let's pretend you're a sheep. Every single human being have now became sheep. <laughs> nice and cozy. And you're walking along up the hills. Up the hills. Every moment, every day, same thing. Grazing, hiding behind the rocks from the bad weather. Grazing having baby lambs, sleeping, grazing, sleeping, grazing. And you just move from mountain to mountain, mountain to mountain. And then one day, all the sheep come to this mountain, this mountain ledge. 
and down below is the biggest crop of green grass. Well, it's not dangerous. You just have to walk down. It's a ledge, but it's quite steep. You have to walk down. And every sheep is looking over. My God, look at that grass. It's so luscious. So beautiful. So, oh my God. We've been <clears throat> nibbling at bits for years, for years, for years, all over, up and down the hills. And down below was this valley of green, fresh, lush, moist grass. Right, let's go. And all the sheep start walking down in a single file. And you find yourself watching them. Simply watching them. And at any point you can join the queue. But you decide just to watch. And then very soon there's no more coming. No more sheep. It's your turn to join the queue. You're last. And you look at the grass behind you go, wow, it's beautiful, it's luscious. But you know what? I'm not going. I'm staying here. And I'm just going to sit down and wait. For whatever is going to happen, is going to happen. And all the sheep, none of them look back. They're all in their robotic, sheep-like mind, looking just to survive for some grass, so they can eat and sleep and multiply. And suddenly, you were one, but now, no more. There's no anger. There was no emotion. There was just this sense of saying, I wish them all the very best of luck. That's my friends, my families. But I'm staying here. I don't know why. I certainly don't know why. I probably may die. In fact, I don't really mind whether I die or whether I live. But it's not about dying and living. It's about saying, you know, enough is enough. That's when you know when enlightenment is beckoning. That's just one example. When you've had enough. Many have this insight through depression, mental illness, horrific mind, engulfed experiences and many just simply one day say you know what I'm not going to work today in fact I'm not going back that's how you know that not many become enlightened because not many have this frame of mind and this frame of mind does not come from mind up here this frame of mind comes from here somewhere here in this region and it's not an anger even though through the worst depression the worst mental state it may come as this I'm giving up but deep in the core it's, you know what it's not like that it was always going to be you were always going to give up always wanting to return home freedom and seeking whatever you're seeking for is to return home and you have never left this home you're just wakening up that's all no significant change to this body no significant change to your family your world your whatever just wakening up but this wakening up reveals that this is the last life the last one no more returning to this so 
when you're enlightened, you don't think about this. When you have seen something spectacular or held, or whatever sense you imagine, I cannot explain through senses, but when you have tasted this kiss, as Muji calls it, the kiss from within, then everything dissolves like ice in water. This is not important. Your body is not important. All your experiences are not important. All your stories are not important. All your relationships are not important. There's something far more important that has yet to be relieved, revealed. By this beckoning enlightenment, this beckoning God, this beckoning one moment. And I guarantee it. I cannot guarantee it. But you know full well in yourself that you are going to experience this. And when you do, bye bye you. Hello. 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 Namaste.